Let his words not be lost on us as we journey nearer and nearer to Easter. Thank you for listening. God bless you all. The second Sunday of Lent, Year C. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and he went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly, there were two men there talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah appearing in glory, and they were speaking of his passing, which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep, but they kept awake, and they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it's wonderful for us to be here. So let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. And as he spoke, a cloud came and covered them with shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence, and at that time they told no one what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a story told about this man walking through the African jungle. He came across a hungry lion. When he spotted the man, he gave chase. The man ran as fast as his legs could take him, and he barely made it up the tree. In no time at all, the lion was sitting beneath the tree, smacking his lips. The man decided to pray to God that the lion would no longer feel that hungry. Next thing, to his amazement, the lion adopted a position of prayer, joining his paws and reverently bowing his head. So he asked the lion if he was praying. Yes, says the lion, I'm saying grace before meals. The lion's posture may have changed, but his heart remained the same. The Gospel today tells us that the experience of the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor happened in the context of prayer. Jesus took Peter, James and John up the mountain and the reading says as he prayed he was transfigured. Now unlike the lion, genuine prayer should bring about a transformation or a transfiguration in us too. Prayer takes us on a journey away from self towards God who knows all our needs. I don't know whether you have read that book by um, Delia Smith. She was the cookery goddess some years ago. I think she still is. And she wrote a book on Lent, A Feast for Lent. And what she says is, prayer is a journey away from self towards God. If in my everyday life the world revolves round me, that may influence the way I pray as well and may be one of the reasons why I don't get what I pray for. And then, of course, there are those people, and I suppose we've all done it at times, we only pray in a crisis. During the war, now I wasn't around then, but some of you here in this congregation may have been around, 
What they used to say was, there are no atheists in foxholes. If you notice around this church here at St. Vincent's, there are two emergency doors which should only be used in an emergency. Now, our contact with God could be a bit like that. Some get serious about prayer, especially in an emergency, but Jesus is with us there all the time, and not just in crisis moments. He's walking with us. He's with us in the Mass. He's our friend. He doesn't just want us to call on him when we're in a critical situation. He wants us to talk to him every day. I believe also that a lot of personal problems can be minimized through prayer. For that change to happen, however, we need to get our prayer priorities right. The Lord's Prayer, I think, is an excellent example. You will notice in the Our Father, for instance, petitions are in the order of importance. Firstly, we pray that God's kingdom may come. So when we get down, we kneel down, maybe the first thing we should say is the Our Father. Now St. Teresa of Avila said that maybe if we say the Our Father really well from our heart, maybe that's the only prayer we need to pray. Because if we really meant it, then there's everything in it. That his kingdom may come. And that his will, not my will, his will, be done on earth as in heaven. Now that, those are truly selfless prayers. We have a journey there away from self, really into God and what God wants. But even the second part of the prayer, when we focus a bit on ourselves, it, that seems also to be truly selfless. We say, Give us this day our daily bread, which refers not just to ordinary bread, which keeps body and ordinary food, which keeps body and soul together, but above all, the bread of life, which we receive every Sunday, the Lord himself. You know, I think it's really sad when parents bring their children for First Holy Communion. They deck them out beautifully, and they're, they're really looking great, and it's a lovely day for the children. But then, shortly after that, maybe a couple of Sundays beyond that, you don't see them again. So I'm sure our Lord must be scratching his head and saying, do they really love me? Do they believe in me? I want to give myself to them every week, and if you're going to Mass every day, I want to give myself every day. I'm their friend. But if they never show up, it's like if you're in love with somebody and suddenly you stop seeing them. They would say, well, I can't see how that person loves me, so I don't think I'll be marrying that person. But the Lord is the same. us to resist temptation also. Now if we're kneeling down for prayer, not just during Lent, but also we say, Lord, preserve me from temptation. I know I could easily give in, but with your strength and your power, I know I'll be faithful. And then it says, deliver us from the evil one. Well, we don't want to come under the influence of the evil one, but are many of us Pray for that. Are we just praying to God in an emergency? Or how many of us pray for those things? And if we really pray from the heart, then we know that's vital in our following of Jesus. St. Paul, sorry, we must persevere as well in our prayer. I noticed from the transfiguration scene that the apostles were heavy with sleep, it says. Sometimes, we're so jaded that the last thing we want to do is pray. But that's the time to say the prayers and to prove yourself. St. Paul, 
in today's reading talks about people being destined to be lost. What he says is there are many people behaving as enemies of the cross of Christ. They are destined to be lost. The only things they think of are earthly things, whereas we know our true homeland is in heaven. So when you're kneeling down to pray, pray that when you close your eyes in death, you will indeed inherit eternal life, because that's really what life is all about. It's about taking up our place in heaven, which the Lord has reserved for us. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests, says that the person who prays won't be lost. I know St. Paul says the things they think about are earthly things, they are destined to be lost. But the person who prays won't be lost. <laughs>